All right. Are you ready for Thanksgiving? I am. My wife has laid out the menu. She has surveyed every member of our family, which there are many, and there will be something special for everybody. But my favorite is the deep fried turkey. We've smoked our turkeys. We've traditionally baked our turkeys and we've done a few other things, but deep frying is by far my favorite. So ready for that. By the way, my name is Bill Deweese. I'm a professional voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. And in just a moment, I will be sharing with you the third in a five-part series talking about the fundamentals of voiceover. But first of all, this reminder, my voiceover Black Friday sale begins Friday, but you can go to the website now to learn what it is and get all the details. And you can do that at voblackfridaysale.com voblackfridaysale.com i'll put the link below in the description so you can go there look at the video and you know look at all the bullet points and find out exactly what's going on but the idea was i want to give you a lot of fantastic training content to really supercharge your voiceover career at a ridiculously low price and black friday just seems like the perfect time to do that so go check it out voblackfridaysale.com so without further ado let's get into part three of our five-part series on voiceover fundamentals today talking about voiceover performance Hey, welcome to this third installment on the fundamentals of voiceover, getting back to basics, learning the things that will create the strong foundation, the bedrock for a long and prosperous and sustainable voiceover career. Earlier this week, we talked about getting your head right, having the right mindset, Uh, talked about audio quality, making sure that what you send out from a quality perspective, audio quality, not performance, audio quality is outstanding to be competitive. Now, today we move on to another aspect of audio and it's not the technical quality, it's the performance that you're sending out. And so I want to share a few thoughts with you when it comes to performance. And the great thing about what you do behind a microphone is this, it's not really so much about learning something new as it is learning something or relearning something that you already know. Let me repeat that. This is not so much about learning a new skill, It's about learning to do what you already know to do. What does that mean exactly? Voiceover ultimately is about being believable. When somebody hears you, you have to resonate with them. They have to believe that you believe that what you're talking about, which means you speak more from your heart than from your head. Um, We typically, that's the way we communicate to people automatically by default when there's not a microphone in our face. However, there is something very mysterious and magical about a microphone. When the microphone is put in front of us, we tend to go into a completely different mode, what I call performance mode. And that is we become the person that we think we're supposed to be instead of being the person that we are. So that being said, I have three tips, three strategies that you can use to increase the quality of your performance to increase your chances of getting higher, to get more work and make more money as a voiceover talent. So number one, and this is a nearly universal suggestion, slow down. I've never heard you before, unless I've worked with you one-on-one, but I know that the odds are you need to slow down. I would say over 90% of the students that I work with tend to read too fast. Maybe it's nerves, Maybe it's adrenaline. There's something about the microphone. There's just, there is something about that microphone that causes us to do things that we wouldn't do if there wasn't a microphone there. And the problem is we don't sense it. The person hearing us senses it, but to us, we don't realize that we're flying through the script. So regardless of what speed you normally read at, I'm going to suggest that you begin by just slowing down, take your time. If you need to speed up for time purposes or because the script demands it, the client demands it, that's fine. You can move into that, but let's start by just slowing down. It allows you to better understand and interpret as you speak. It allows the listener to better uh, uh, absorb and interpret as you speak. Okay, so that's number one, slow down. Number two, communicate in thoughts, not sentences. Now. If you, especially if you come from like a performance background, actors, broadcasters tend to, it's almost like subconsciously they're trying to get to the end of the script without making a mistake. And instead of looking at the thoughts and the meaning that's been communicated, 
they're looking at the words and the sentences and trying to get to the end and make it sound pretty and make it sound good. What I want to encourage you to do is to slow down and speak in thoughts. Now, probably would help if I would demonstrate that for you. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, here we go. I pulled up a script for me to read. This is, it's a hospital script and I, which I do a lot of these, but this is, you know, it doesn't matter if it's for a hospital or a car dealership. The principle is still, still the same. So here's how I would typically hear this. I would say from the average person, uh, when I'm coaching them, when they first start, here's how they might read it. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living proof. Life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. Now, instead of looking at the words, I'm going to look at the thoughts, and that might be phrases, it might be portions of sentence, or a complete sentence might be a thought, but I'm going to think in terms of meaning and intent and thoughts as opposed to words. And here's how I would approach it. After discovering a heart defect at 22 weeks, this child is living proof. Life has its best chance when all your specialists work together. Billings Clinic, where it all comes together. And you might say, well, Bill, you did a lot of, you emphasized words and, you know, what words should I underline and highlight? I didn't do any of that. I just did what intuitively came naturally to me as I thought about meaning and intent. If you begin by going in with a pencil or a pen, or if you're doing it with a, a document, you know, you're just going in and you're underlining and highlighting, what you're going to do is put your, your focus on words again. I'm not focusing on words. I'm, I'm starting with intent. The intent leads me to just like, again, I'm not teaching you what you don't know already. If we, you and I were having a conversation and I wanted to make a point, I would get a little slower. I might get a little louder. I might get a little more animated. I want to help you do what comes naturally when it comes to communicating. So that's what I mean when I talk about communicating thoughts as opposed to communicating words. And then finally, emotion. People will believe you. And that's ultimately, that's how we get hired because for just a moment, somebody believes us. It's like when you go to a movie, you know, the, you know who the actors are, you know, they're being paid, but for that moment in time, reality is suspended and you believe the character, you identify with the character. They make you laugh. They make you cry. You fear for them. You uh, celebrate with them, even though you know they're actors, because for that moment, they made you feel an emotion. And, it, and, and you identified and you believed and you followed them throughout the story. Same thing in voiceover. People need to hear you hear more so than hear. How does that work? Well, it means that you have to make the script, the story, personal. Whenever I'm looking at a script, I'm thinking, okay, Bill, if this was you, if you're in that scenario, how, how would you feel about that? If I'm, for instance, the, the hospital commercial, that I just read for you, talking about um, discovering a heart defect in a child who's 22 weeks old. If I'm the father and that's my child, how would I feel about that? To know, you know, what would make me trust this hospital? Would, uh, you know, the, the person reading it, would they inspire my confidence to trust them? Can I believe them? You have to make everything personal. And remember this, if you feel the emotion when you read it, the person hearing you, that will resonate, that will vibrate. They will feel it as well. They're more likely to believe you and ultimately more likely to hire you. So tomorrow, Thanksgiving and on into Friday, we'll continue this five-part series. I hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're finding the information useful. And I hope you're putting it to work in your voiceover career. Don't forget to check out voblackfridaysale.com and I'll see you tomorrow.